Well, the, the cloisters as we know it today was really planned in the early 1930s. And Mr. Rockefeller and Joseph Breck, who was the first curator at the cloisters, were deeply engaged in discussion as to what the building should finally be. And some architects who were initially engaged wanted it to be a highly ecclesiastical looking structure. And both Breck and Rockefeller were rather against that idea. They wanted a mixture of ecclesiastical and secular architecture. So the way the cloisters is laid out today, there are chapels like the Langall Chapel where the Grisai window is installed. And there are, there are a series of five different cloisters, but there are also rooms that are purely secular. And the collection is a, a wonderful mixture of religious art and secular art. Secular art being actually the rarer of the two. Um, and from the very beginning, Joseph Breck um, understood that within a cathedral, the stained glass was as important um, as the portal sculpture, for example. So in fact, the first acquisition made for the cloisters, which I think was in 1931, about seven years before the building actually opened, was a stained glass window. And it's always been, as I have a particular interest in stained glass, I've always wanted to fulfill Brack's original vision and have all the windows in the cloisters glazed with stained glass. Um, in Langall, which is a, a high Romanesque chapel, when the building opened in 1938, there was a grisaille panel in the axial window of the, of the chapel. And over the years, we were able to acquire grisaille panels and glaze them into the other apertures the point where in the early 2000s, all the windows were glazed with 13th century French grisaille, except for the west window in the north elevation, which is a very large window. It's nine feet tall. So when on the trip to London, I stopped in at saint Fog, and he produced these four panels of stained glass, I was really taken back. Um, I had seen photographs before I went to London and I came equipped with measurements. And to my great pleasure, the panels were perfect size for the existing aperture in that chapel. Um, two of them needed slightly filling out. Um, a fair amount of restoration work was required. Um, and they didn't add up to the entire height of the window, so we had to fill out the bottom and the header of the window. And, well, it was very unusual to find four panels of, this, of grisaille in the same pattern. Um, all the other panels we have in the cloisters are single panels. So it was a, a, a very fortuitous find to have these four together, which filled about seven-eighths of the window. The panels are of an exceptionally complex design. In fact, the most complex design of grisaille I've ever encountered in the 13th century. Grisaille, by the way, just refers to colorless glass that has a pattern painted on it in gray or, or, or black matte paint. Um, in this case, colored glass has also been incorporated and there's a, a, a network, a lattice work of overlapping diamonds in a brilliant blue and the interstices of which are centered on red bosses. And within that, there are a series of strap work patterns, each overlapping, and within those, there are fictive vines growing. And almost all grisaille windows, when there are vines, they start at the bottom and grow up. In this case, and it's the only example I've ever encountered, they grow out of the sides of the panels and laterally weave in to the strap work. We don't know exactly where these panels came from, but stylistically they're very close to um, Fécamp in Normandy, 
And some of the most notable similarities with glass still at Fécon are the blue lattice work and colored, usually red bosses. Red and blue was sort of the favorite combination because the red projects and the blue recedes and it gives dimensionality, visual dimensionality to the panels. And it also provides a more of a three-dimensional effect of the strap work and the vines uh, weaving in and out of it. Nothing that re remains at Fécon is as complex as the pattern in these panels, but there are these overlapping similarities. So these panels must date in the third quarter of the 13th century, and I would say probably between 1270 and 1280.